Hey everybody, welcome. This is Mike and welcome to the Pound for Pound Leader Podcast as well as the Inspire Collective Podcast and Homegrown Heroes. It's so good to be with you guys. I hope you're having an incredible November as we head into Thanksgiving. I hope you're thinking about all you can be thankful for more than you were thinking about that turkey. Uh, Good to have you guys here today. I'm really excited about this this interview that I want you to listen to. this one is powerful. Let me tell you about this. Um, we are, I'm, I'm interviewing David Cunningham, who is a filmmaker, director, producer of 10 different films um, for more than two decades. David, let me give you, give you his credentials. David has directed big budget studio films from Fox, Disney, ABC, pioneering and award-winning independent features, as well as hard-hitting documentaries filmed in over 50 countries. Um, David was born in Switzerland to his parents, Lauren and Darlene Cunningham, the founders of YWAM. You'll hear that more in the interview. And then David Cunningham uh, has had privilege, has had the privilege uh, to direct a wide range of today's finest actors, including Harvey Keitel, Edward James Olmos, Mark Strong, Robert Carlyle, Kiefer Sutherland, Ian McShane, Christopher Eccleston, Idris Elba, wow, Matt Dillon, come on now, The Outsiders, Jim Caviezel, Jesus, right? Donnie Wahlberg, Alexander Ludwig, and Cunningham is probably best known for his gritty World War II drama called To End All Wars on 20th Century Fox, and the primetime Emmy-winning miniseries on ABC called The Path to 9-11. And David recently completed directing the action adventure The Wind and the Reckoning, penned by John Fusco, who made Young Guns, Hidalgo, Marco Polo, and starring Jason Scott Lee, Jungle Book, Bruce Lee, and Mulan. Cunningham is represented by the United Talent Agency and is a member of Directors Guild of America. And having traveled, watch this, personally to 150 countries, David has earned membership in the prestigious Travelers Century Club, whose members must prove that they had visited at least 100 countries. I'd like to be in that club. And he enjoys long distance trail running, open water swimming, but most of all, surfing at home in Hawaii with his wife, Judith, and their three children, Maddie, Kenna, and Liam. Guys, take a look at this trailer. It is amazing of the movie, The Wind and the Reckoning. Kohalau knows this land. I wouldn't underestimate it. There's the the firepower. And the numbers. Where is that leper bastard? With me, my husband, Ko'olau. With me, my child, Kalei. With me, until the final disappearance. You are the trophy. He obsesses, and he will not stop until you are dead. Hey everybody, need I say more? Yes, we do. We are interviewing the great, good man, 
David Cunningham. Everybody, welcome David Cunningham to the podcast. Hey, David. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for making time. Uh, tell us what the last uh, six months or maybe the last three months of your life has been like uh, since you, the release of The Wind and the Reckoning. It's been wild, Pastor Mike. And first off, thank you for having me. And thank you and the whole Inspire team for all you guys have been doing for so many months. And you guys came on early, early supporter. and So grateful. Yeah, we've been on this crazy tour with our film, The Wind and the Reckoning. I just got off the plane last night, getting on another one tomorrow morning. <laughs> and uh, we've been bouncing around from festivals on the continent to now premieres throughout the islands. And um, we're basically touring with a group of Native Hawaiians, a delegation that is touring mm -hmm. with the movie. Wow. And so we're doing Native Hawaiian protocols, and then discussions with our cast that is traveling with us as well. And then um, afterwards, we're also in some cases doing some forms of entertainment and cultural exchanges, whether it's with other Native uh, Americans or other cultures. So it's it's been wild. I think we've done more. Um, so I, it's all a bit of a blur to me. <laughs> Last one was yesterday, I think. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's it's been amazing. Well, that's awesome, David. Because I, 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 most of our listeners have not yet seen the movie, and I just want to let them know that this movie called "The Wind and the Reckoning" is about a beautiful story of a family on the island of Kauai that is trying to evade capture from the authorities during a time of leprosy, roughly around 1894. Am I am I right? 1894. Starts in 1893 and it goes for three and a half years. But yeah, okay, it's about that. wow, and uh, it's a true story of a of a man named Ko'olau and his wife named Pi'ilani and how uh, Ko'olau gets uh, he gets leprosy. And during that time, people, if you're listening to this, watching this, um, only if I'm not mistaken, only the Hawaiians were the ones that were rounded up and put on uh, isolation on Kalau Papa Peninsula on the island of Molokai, and it's just a heart wrenching time where there's a change in government, there's an overthrow, um, there's also there's also families being ripped apart, torn apart, sent and sent away from one another, and people turning in other people uh, who have leprosy. And it was just a really terrible time in Hawaii's history. And David, I'm going to tell everybody that the reason why this movie captured my attention so much um, was because it was about a year ago during the, it seemed like the, the height of the pandemic craze of vaccinations. And it was during that time where whether you, no matter how you feel about vaccinations, uh, people, I think it's important for us to understand that it's, that's your own choice to take it. Um, but it was being imposed upon the people. Um, and it was that time that it kind of, it kind of paralleled um, what was going on in 1893, 1894, with what was going on in 2021 and 2022. Uh, what I, from my perspective of being a pastor and a leader in the community, and that's why I think it struck a chord. Number one, because I'm Hawaiian. Number two, because it's definitely a uh, you can you sense the faith of God in this movie uh, through this family. And it was in that time, people, that you that you have to watch this movie that um, that it grabbed my attention and my staff's attention so much that it, we we really believe that God was going to use this movie. Uh, in Hawaii, and not just Hawaii, but throughout the world, but mainly in the islands um, where there seems to be kind of this um, searching for, uh, David, how would you put it, where there's people in uh, of Hawaiian ancestry like myself, but at the same time, um, a little bit disappointed in the past of, of what's happened in, in Hawaii. But I feel like I told somebody, David, that it felt like there was a, a reconciliation um, and, and a lot of questions yet at the same time was the reconciliation um, of what happened during that, that time. Um, could you speak to that about why did you pick up the project and how was it shot? Yeah, you know, it's been a long journey. So I first heard about this from my one of my creative partners, John Fusco, who's a really successful screenwriter. Young yeah. Guns, one and two, Hidalgo, Forbidden Amazing. Kingdom, Mark, Highwaymen. And he read uh, a short story version of this in the 80s when he was on his honeymoon in, on the Big Island. And I was working with him on another movie, a studio movie, and we were riding his horses. 
on his farm there in Vermont, and he brought up this pro this this concept of kolau, and I was embarrassed. I grew up in Hawaii and love history, so I've studied a lot of it, and I was embarrassed because I hadn't heard about this. Mm -hmm. And um, we started digging into it over the years, and then 2013 we started getting serious about it, and John began knocking away on the script, and and really one of the big kind of lightning rod. Um, inspirations was when we found P. Ilani's memoirs had been translated into English. Wow. And it was, her memoirs were only translated into English in early 2000s. So she has the first hand account and she wanted to set the record straight because other accounts were making Ko'olau to be the, 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 the bad guy, the nemesis, uh, he was burning down houses and it was terrorizing mm. Kauai and, and she wanted to set the record straight. And I think it's important for your listeners to understand that this was this Native Hawaiian family were committed to the creator God and they'd met in missionary school. Uh, and there was this tension, you know, not unlike your heritage, but the very sheriff that was pursuing him, they went to church with. And so wow. when... When they got leprosy uh -huh. um, and they were going to divide the family, uh, there's that tension going on because that sheriff was now working under the provisional government. And so now he had a new job description, right? And they were using this law that if anyone is even suspected of leprosy, suspected. So we've, wow. we've been meeting all kinds of families affiliated with Kalapapa and Many were sent there with a birthmark or maybe someone had an issue with them. And this was a way to get them out of there. Wow. Um, so it was, you know, a, a very dark time. And but this family, they they refused to be separated. And they said, who are you to break the bonds of marriage? Because the moment your feet touched the sands in Kalapapa, by law, your marriage was considered divorce, and wow. you were considered dead. Wow. And they said, we will not be broken. Our family will not be separated. And they went on the run. And for three and a half years, they were pursued by bounty hunters. Bounty hunters were given $10 a Hawaiian to bring to Kalapapa. And they would pull them out of schools. We wow. met one, wow. one uh, patient. He was pulled out of school in Oahu at six years old. He's still alive. He's still with us. Um, and we just heard all these heartbreaking stories. Just recently at our premiere in Oahu, one of the experts came up to me and said, do you know there's 3,000 babies born at Kalapapa? And many of them at a certain age would be taken away from their parents. Wow. And and I think something, Pastor, that's been like really revelational for me yeah. growing up here in Hawaii yeah. is that Kalapapa, they're from all the islands, were sent there. There wasn't, you know, so you have families. So yeah. we keep meeting families wow. that have deep connections there again and again and again. So 8,000 Hawaiians are in unmarked graves today. And wow. many of them lost and forgotten. And so that's that's my heart. And mm -hmm. we went on this journey, you know, you asked me personally, you know, I'm, I'm a descendant of missionaries, you know, and what... What was the descendants of missionaries? What was in God's plan for that generation in Hawaii? And clearly, they they went off the rails, undermined the people. And as you well know, tens of thousands of Hawaiians walked out of the church because their holy brothers and sisters betrayed them. Yeah. And if I can play a small role, I don't really get emotional here, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. If I can yeah. play a small role in what the missionary descendants were supposed to be doing for the Hawaiian people yeah. Yeah. in this film, then that's amazing. It's like it's it's like you're redeeming redeeming that, you know, or you're there there there's a um there is a, a an amazing thing that I that I've been learning in the last few years. The last year I would say is uh, I've been listening to different lectures and um and one of the lectures that I listened to was about how the you know the the twelve companies of missionaries that came from New England they all came with great intentions, yeah. um, and the misnomer that they took away the kapu system then it wasn't them the kapu was already broken by the time they arrived Kamehameha the Great dies in eighteen nineteen right 
the missionaries yeah. get on the ship on 1819. How are you going to, there's no telegraph at that time that, that would <laughs> give them any word, you know? Um, yeah. And so when they're on the ship, that's when he dies. And in that void of time is where the kapu was broken and they land. So there's a void. Yeah. Kapu is broken by Kahumanu. Keopuolani, uh, Kawikeo Oli, uh, I think, uh, no, not Kawikeo, Keopuolani, his mother, and um, and and Kamehameha II, is, and, and and all his chiefs, his, I mean, some of his his advisors bro broken, so they arrive, and those twelve companies that come in about an eighty year period, they all come with great intentions, great intentions, push forward the gospel, love the people of Hawaii, um, and you're right. It was the offspring. It was the second and third generation that were sent back to the mainland for schooling. They were sent to, you know, the what were originally seminaries like Yale, mm -hmm. sent there. But secular humanism made it in by the time they get sent back to these schools. That's what I'm discovering. So you you have Darwinism that has seeped into um, the educate, you know, the Ivy League schools. And when they come back to help run more business rather than pick up the missionary mantle they're coming back as mission um, businessmen and that's when it all begins to fall apart and so i just wanted to to leap off of what you said about the we're yeah. going to redeem that this film is redeeming that i am a descendant of the original missionaries in 1835 david lyman and my family goes back for centuries in these islands and your dad prophesied over me uh on the phone he says mike i think god's going to use you to reconcile be a part of that reconciliation process between yeah. missionaries and and, and the Hawaiian people. You know, David, I'd love uh, to, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I was just gonna say, you know, we, we've been grappling as we've been showing this movie, you know, and been been working on it for several years, and it, and ironically, it took the pandemic to actually trigger it, where mm. because cast and crew were available, we weren't working, we moved on to a ranch on Big Island here, Kohala, not far from your hometown, Onaka'a. And we created a bubble and we made and worked this film together and on a shoestring. And it's just mm. been a wing and a prayer. But uh, we felt like the Lord showed up. And, you know, my my constant prayer is may the God of Pi'ilani and Ko'olau show up. And mm -hmm. he's been showing up. It's been amazing. But I've been trying to grapple with as, as we have been doing these screenings um, and Hawaiians come up to me and are are processing and and I'm trying to to listen. You know, I don't have answers, but we're we're yeah. we're bringing up we're bringing up questions and and uh, articulating the questions. Mm -hmm. This one woman came up to me uh, in tears at one of our Oahu uh, screenings there at Ward, and she was weeping and she was saying. Thank you for showing and demonstrating Hawaiians giving aloha in the face of colonization. Wow. And I was like, whoa. And the second thing she said was, thank you for defining what a haole is and what a haole isn't. Yeah. And, you know, growing up, in, I went to Konawana, survived, killed haole day, all that. I was the only haole boy out of my friends. It was um, a real thing, folks. Real, real deal. I made a movie about it called Beyond Paradise years ago. <laughs> um, but, you know, my heart is so to honor the host culture of Hawaii. And, right. you know, we talk about diversity, you know, and that's been Hawaii being the most diverse ethnically, culturally in the United States by far. But no matter what your ethnicity and no matter where you are, this is a principle that, that's biblical. Mm -hmm. Is that we? It's the right thing to do to turn and honor the host culture, and when you turn and honor the host culture, wherever you are, you yeah. will get that blessing, yeah. and you will not only be a blessing, but you will get that blessing. And I think that's what's starting to resonate beyond our shores of Hawaii with other indigenous peoples. So I, there's a word that I'd love to to just see what you think, Pastor. Okay. And okay. it's 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 the word resilience. Yeah. And I've been thinking about as as these Hawaiians come up and process and talk. And I, I looked up the word resilience and I always I always thought it meant almost like armor, you know, where some bullet will bounce off you. I'm resilient, I'm strong. Mm -hmm. But as I looked up the definition, it actually said talked about trauma being inflicted. So you are wounded, you are 
something in you has has been impacted negatively. Right. But it's the ability to overcome that. And so it I I feel like there's a lesson in there. And I don't have it all figured out, but the Hawaiian people have had trauma inflicted on them. Yeah. And and my prayer is that resilience that their souls, I I can't speak to what Hawaii is gonna look like physically and politically, yeah. but for the souls that have been carrying that, like you, like so many of your family, you know, that's my prayer is maybe this film can play a small role in helping that resilience be fulfilled. Oh, I love that. I I love I I think resilience is throughout throughout the Bible. You look in the Old Testament, people were resilient, um, who went through traumatic times. You know, you look at Gideon, Gideon was resilient. Um, when, when, you know, in the Midianites came after them and he's hiding in a threshing wheat at the bottom of a wine press and trying to, uh, save his food, uh, because the Midianites were coming and stealing their food. They were disrupting the food supply chain. When you look at yeah. the resilience of the people, you know, the Hebrew people, um, and then you look at the, the resilience of the Hawaiians. I think, Hawaiians are tremendously resilient. I think that um, with that warrior, see the, the the thing about people of Hawaii, they're beautiful, loving, peace loving, but there's a warrior side to them as well. And, um, and I think you put it so well when you said resilience, I, you see resilience coming out of this film. You see resilience in the people. What I would love to know as a filmmaker, people, if you don't know David Cunningham, you have to, uh, at the very beginning, I, I announced all of his credits and the movies that he's created, produced, directed. Incredible. Some of my favorite actors he's worked with, Matt Dillon, come on, uh, The Outsiders, Matt Dillon on The Outsiders. He was the the, the punk older brother on that old film in the 80s. Um, I'm looking at D Donnie Wahlberg. I mean, thinking about Mark Strong. Mark Strong is one of my favorite films um, with Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, Body of Lies. What an incredible actor. You worked with some of the best. What made you, uh, as a as a Christ follower who was brought up by Lauren and Darlene Cunningham, everybody, the founders of YWAM, Youth with a Mission, University of the Nations in Kona. He is born, he goes, David goes to Kona Waina High School. I used to play against Kona Waina High School. There were <laughs> there are only like five blonde-haired Howleys that I knew in Kona Waina. And one of them was <laughs> Andrew Cannon. You know Andrew Cannon? Andrew Cannon. Uh, he was a cross-country runner, surfer. Um, there's this guy named Kona named Taituna Taituna. Do you remember him? Like this huge Samoan volleyball player and basketball player. Incredible. Anyway, he went to Kona Waina High School, everybody. That's that's as, <laughs> that's as local as it can get, man. It is rough and tumble. He's brought up. He becomes a filmmaker. And I'd love to hear that part of the story in sometime during this during this interview. Um, and so instead of being a missionary, so to speak, and you know, you've been to countries like over a hundred countries, right? You've became a filmmaker to tell stories, the more olelo of different people and their stories. What made you take on this project when um John Fusco came to you with this script and this story? Yeah, well, to to ramp up to that answer, Pastor, um, you know, I have seven generations of pastors and missionaries in my family, wow. four generations on the other side. So my great grandfather started 13 churches out of a covered wagon in the territory of Oklahoma, building wow. churches by hand, brick by brick, baking them in the sun. They'd fill up a church, go get back in the covered wagon and do it again. My great uncle was a missionary to China during World War II. And he was put into, he stayed with his church through World War II and was put in a prisoner of war camp. And uh, the Lord provided for him, a chicken would lay an egg outside the fence line, same place every day. And that's how he was sustained. Um, wow, incredible. My grandmother was the first woman ordained minister in uh, Assemblies of God. And she what? she. Was, She's the first woman to speak in Young E. Cho's church, the largest church in the world. What? And challenged them to have women as pastors. And now there's more pastors that are women at the church than there are, there are men. And my parents started this organization, YWAM, Youth of the Mission. So here I come, the family business, clear missions, ministry. And as a kid growing up here in Hawaii, and I, I had this awesome childhood because I got – 
you know what it was like growing up here in the 70s on the, on the Big Island. It might as well have been like developing country. Yeah. And I, I mean that in a really good way. Right. It good was, way. you know, we didn't have a single traffic light. I was, you know, we were feral, like no shoes, no shirt, you know. So I got all the freckles because no sunscreen, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and just had an awesome time. But we would also travel and visit missionaries around the world as part of what my, my folks would do. And we'd go to these remote locations to encourage missionaries. And I saw a lot of amazing people doing really good things, hard, hard places. And I I would hear their stories and I'd watch my father bring those stories back mm. and pass them on. And even though my family is a history of, of ministers like you, you know, you have to be a storyteller. And um, there are authors and all of that. So when I finally I came to my dad as a teenager and I was like, you know, I think I'm, I want to be a filmmaker. No exposure to that. Not at all. We had I don't know if you remember the Aloha Theater was the only one Kona side back in the day. And sometimes it had lice up, up Captain Cook side up. Malcolm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. By Kelly Kikoa side. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, it was, you know, it wasn't like we were around Hollywood, you know, and. And but I just had this, it was just in me. And so my dad was like, Well, you mean like Billy Graham movies, David? You know, like I don't like, no, 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 like Hollywood movies. And I if I had the lexicon that I do now, I would say I have a heart for popular culture. Yeah. I, I want to be in that, I want to bring stories into popular culture and get people thinking and processing and bridge story with audiences and so this particular film what struck me not only my heart for hawaii this is my fourth movie to make in hawaii um 10th i guess overall mm -hmm. but my i i have a a passion for hawaii i love it here i have the privilege to raise my family here we have four generations on the big island now that wow. have joined over the years my grandfather and father first came here in 1960. And uh, so I, I love this place and I love the people. But the, in terms of the themes, resilience, yes. But at the core of it, too, it's all about Ohana. Mm -hmm. And, well, you know, Ohana, not much like the word Aloha, is sometimes dismissed yeah. as being, oh, that's nice. That's warm and fuzzy. Right. But Ohana... Ohana family is a weapon, and it is uh, when when Ohana if if Ohana breaks down, mm. we it's it's over. Yeah, you know, society will break down. Right, and, and the Creator God is all about Ohana, and and when I, when I saw in this storyline about government overreach into Ohana, when I saw racism trying to impact ohana yep. all of that that's what i i wanted to get behind and this fam this movie was a, a family film so my wife was the makeup artist on this my two daughters were assistants my son was an extra and we all lived together in making this movie on this ranch in kohala our star jason scott lee he's he had one requirement to do this film was that his family would be there with him well, Wow. And so his three kids and wife moved on to the ranch with us. They've been touring with us. My family's been touring with us. That's so amazing. there is power in that. And we need to, whatever your, however you define your Ohana, whatever that looks like, it needs to be protected at all costs. And that's what I felt was like Koala was righteous to be yep. able to push back and, and, um, so that that is one of the really key things. Many others, but that was something that just really struck me. Hundred percent, um, David. You saw the resilience in the Ohana. That mm -hmm. was that. That's where the resilience was when he wouldn't allow his family to be separated um, over a hundred hundred years ago, hundred forty years ago. I'm not. I'm not letting my family get separated. We're, it's and 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 that was what grabbed me. To be honest, people. You're listening to this. This grabbed me. This grabbed me the most. I mean, I, I I cried the whole movie, even though it was, you know, it was still the director's cut. 
and um and i got to see it in 2021 and here it is coming to fruition all of your hard work in 2022 being released and and um guys you need to know this that this movie is so powerful that you got to go watch it right right away right away at consolidated ward uh before it breaks out anywhere um so we can continue to move into different consolidated theaters throughout the islands because every Every person in, who lives in Hawaii needs to see this film because it is such a great story, historically, spiritually as well, culturally, no doubt about it. But this movie actually was made at the right time. And uh, to me, everybody, you have to this, watch this. This is, the, it seemed to parallel so much what Hawaii was going through with uh, the end of the shutdowns and or right around the shutdowns and the possibility of no travel um, and breaking up families uh, that you can't fly if you didn't get the vaccination and your 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 parents who live in Las Vegas cannot come home or you cannot go see them until and that was being that was a resolution that was being pushed into Congress uh, and thank God that it never it never became a bill but it was that time that I was feeling that pressure and when I saw the movie it just paralleled everything that Hawaii seemed to be going through and I was sensing and that movie just was boom perfect timing um, and so. To me, um, this movie, everybody, you got to go see it. I highly recommend this movie, David. Can I can I break some news on your podcast? Some breaking oh, news? Yeah, yeah please up? do. The, we've been doing so well at Ward. We are opening this weekend at Couple Day and Pearl City. Wow. So it's going to be showing starting this weekend, Ward, Couple Day, um, and uh, Pearl City. And then we open in Maui as well this weekend and Kauai. That's so this, incredible. And then the following week will be in Big Island. And I got some good news for you too. Not only mm -hmm. will be in Kona starting the 23rd and Hilo, Makalapua and uh, Prince Kuhio and Hilo. We've been invited by Honoka'a. So we're coming to Honoka'a. Wow. To the Honoka'a Theater. They heard about the film, invited us. And wow. we're also... Even Waikoloa has invited us. So it's working. So all Inspire family that showed up, so grateful. It's working. So please wow. keep coming. So we'll be we'll be all over the islands. And now is the time. Please show up. Every ticket matters because all these theater chains are tied into uh, like a box office system. Okay. And so when they, they see people buying tickets, they want it. They invite your film. And these theater chains also have mother companies in the in, in on the continent so we're we're starting to get some rumbles there because we we want we want this to keep going so a big mahalo to everybody but oh, praise please god keep going up. praise god you heard it first yeah <laughs> <laughs> i know i was so stoked for you guys and for us Especially the one at Honoka'a. I want to, I want to, I'm going to be there. I want, you, you got to yeah. get me in there. I, I got to host somehow and get all my friends and yeah. all my friends. I'm going to buy them the tickets. They got to go. Um, uh, guys, I want to, I want to add one more thing. Um, this movie, when it was made during the pandemic, in the beginning of the pandemic, in the beginning, and how the miraculous way that the, uh, the different crews were available, the film crews that were doing Hawaii Five O and, were, were put out of work for a while. They were available. All, all the people that, every crew, I'm talking about from key grips to cameramen to caterers or whatever, right? All of that, David, did that happen at that time? And and how how long, it, it's it's in Hawaiian, uh, the subtitles, they learned Hawaiian. Jason Scott Lee had to learn Hawaiian to, in order to play the ko'olau. Um, how many, how many days did it take to film this movie on the Big Island? Well, a few things we're really proud of, Pastor, is this was made by a hundred percent Hawaii crew, and that may not sound important, too significant for some of your audience, but it's really significant because most productions that are made in Hawaii, um, mm -hmm. so many people are are imported from from LA or whatever, and um, this was a moment for us to say, you know, we're grateful in this. In this, in the industry, the creative industries in Hawaii, for the Jurassic Parks, for for the yeah. big blockbusters, because yeah. it brings work. But really, they're coming here for the backdrop. They're coming here for the waterfalls, for the beaches. That's awesome. But we have so many stories to tell from here, 
And we have storytellers to tell them mm. behind the mm. camera, in front of the camera. And my prayer is that this can be an example of what we can do, what's possible. And I think you, you saw uh, a version of that, what happened in New Zealand, yeah? Where people started telling their own stories, like Whale Rider and yeah. Back in the Day Once Were Warriors, yeah. that, those kinds of films. And it began building, building, and paved the way for a, a Lord of the Rings to then push it over the top. Wow. And I, I really, my prayer for Hawaii is that we will be a beacon to the world as storytellers and we we've got what it takes so we have yeah 100 percent way crew um a lot of them were like from magnum and other and we were and everybody was at home unemployed and um i called up my partners and said hey guys i know we've been trying to make this with a bigger budget this and that but what if we go bootstrap epic on a budget and everybody gets paid the same. We everyone got a paycheck. Um, we were a union show, but mm -hmm. the the lowest mm -hmm. tier. And I did the the Shackleton pitch, you know, when he went to the polls and was like, "Who wants to go to, you know, exploring in the ice with me?" And it's low pay, high yeah. chance of <laughs> you probably get sick, you know. Uh, don't know if you're gonna come back. And I did that pitch. I was just real with everybody. You know, we're going to move into this ranch in Kuala and you're stuck there. And so cast, crew, even our extras, we all had to live together. And it ended up being such a special time, hard work, mm. such a special time because we, we had to be there. And we were the first full length feature in Hawaii to be made post pandemic. So we had different branches of government breathing down our, our back to set protocols. So it was really strict. Then thankfully, not a single case of COVID happened. Awesome. Yeah. And that was during the sketchy times. And we were able to get this thing made. So yeah, so it was wing in a prayer. But um, you know, yeah, hopefully this is the start of many more to do. Awesome. Hey everybody, you've been listening to film filmmaker, director, producer David Cunningham from the Big Island in Kona um, with his latest film called The Wind and the Reckoning. I highly suggest, recommend, implore you to go and watch this film and take your family. Probably one of the most wholesome things you'll get to watch in a decade. Go there, watch it. Incredible story. And and tell your friends about it. And and in fact, go to dinner after it. Discuss it. Bring your bring your whole ohana with you and um, and just bring them all with you, your neighborhood. And talk about this movie because it is powerful and it is so, so amazing. David, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your love for the people of Hawaii. Ne. Thank you for um thank you for who you are and and, and the gift God gave you in, in the sphere that you are in and telling stories that bring incredible um knowledge to people. So God bless you. We'll talk soon. God bless, Pastor. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed that interview with David Cunningham. What an incredible incredible opportunity to tell an incredible story. I know for some of you that you don't even live on Oahu or in the islands right now and you, you may not get to see it yet until maybe it goes to Netflix or if it goes to uh, Amazon Prime Video, you'll get to see it there. Or who knows, it might end up in a theater near you. But make sure that you do that. I also want to thank Waiakea Water, who is a sponsor of um, all things Inspire Collective and as well as the Pound for Pound Leader podcast for providing great water for us. Also, the last thing is make sure that you go and see this film. Whoever you are, if you live on Oahu or in the islands, go and see this movie. It is a game changer. And uh, I'm telling you right now, go see it. Until then, may you have an incredible, an incredible Thanksgiving. If you live on Oahu, I'd love to see you at Inspire Church at Waikele, Mililani, Honolulu, and Kailua. And of course, check our website, inspirechurch.live, to see future Waimea services on the Big Island. So good to have you. Until then, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. We thank God for you. God bless and aloha.